I think you're all brave and I know you're all stupid. <laughs> On today's show, plain pleasantries. I flew that aircraft from here to my hometown, Sydney, in Australia. What? Oh. I don't think I would have the forms to do something like that. Fashion frolics. I actually was going to put my thongs on. Australian fur yeah, flip flops. I was, I was envisaging a thong. The <laughs> night is young. And blunt banter. I saw an eyebrow go up despite the Botox. <laughs> <laughs> As five cooks compete for a cloche of cash. A bit like a bargy, but not a bargy. This week we're in and around Bournemouth, home to the UK's largest aviation festival. And hoping to soar above the rest of the competition tonight is Australian sales manager and free time flyer, Andy. All right, let's go. Mine is going to be the best night of the week. I've not got any tactics tonight. I'm just going to let the food do the talking, and I hope it's screaming really loud. Yeah! Bit like your shirt on night one, where Chic are impressed with a fun-filled evening of good food. On my night, I do feel that the main course and starter went exactly how I wanted it to go. Oh, mate, that's delicious. I hope it's not too spicy for everybody. Oh, I love not spicy. at all. I love it. I did find it hard, but I enjoyed it at the same time. Someone else who noticed the food was Tuesday's host, Cafe Owner Ed. Her food was great. She'd made everything herself. Uh, yeah, she's going to be tough to beat. Cheers for the night. Nice. So, did you make the pastry? Cassara, I didn't. So, reflecting on my night, my food, I think, left a little to be desired, and I definitely think they will have pulled me up on buying some products and stuff in. It's moist, it's flavoursome. People dinged him because he didn't make his own pastry and things like that. But you know what? It tasted good. It was presented beautifully. He did really well. Yeah! Whee! Thank you, house party. But night three host accountant Kasara hopes her entertainment will place her in pole position. I was very happy with the pole dancing. I think that I did a good job. Although the food didn't quite match up. I have had seitan before. Uh -huh. I don't remember it being quite this chewy. Oh, no! If I'm honest. I had some very well-deserved criticisms. I completely accept all of them because I did mess up in a few places. Can I try some? And driving instructor Sarah had strong opinions. That is close to one of the worst things I've ever tasted. Really? Oh, my God. What, I don't think what it is that? The vegetarian dish that Andy had should be renamed Satan dish. Seriously, that was gross. I did the... Oh, woof, woof. All right, we get the picture. Last night, it was good. Yeah, it was, it was good. It was, I'd say, average. Below average, in fact, as Kasara's in third place with 26 points, while Sheikah's flying high on 30. So, what's on the menu tonight, Andy? I've chosen Indian food today because it's the most popular food in Britain, it's super tasty, and that's why I've chosen this menu today. His first stab at winning the £1,000 prize... ..is vegetable pakoras with shop-bought mango chutney. Shop-bought mango chutney. <laughs> at least he's making it the point right at the beginning. If anyone criticises me for having shop-bought mango chutney, I'll just tell them life's too short and this is just as good. I must admit I wasn't expecting Indian food again. Well, buckle up and prepare for takeoff. For his starter, Andy starts by chopping ginger and green chilli. I was fortunate in the late 80s to go backpacking in India and I was amazed at the variety of flavours available to vegetarians especially. Next, tomatoes are sliced along with coriander, then blitzed. <sighs> Seriously, that's good. Pakora. We had pakora last night, didn't we? Did we have pakora last night? Close. It was the veggie option Shika cooked. Yeah, no, I love that. I think that's great. <laughs> I wonder if they'll match mine. The competition is on. I think I'll get a wry smile from Sheikah when she sees I'm having a go at Indian. I hope she sees this as an homage to her culture, because, frankly, it's great food and I hope I can do it justice. Next, carrots are chopped along with cauliflower, aubergine and onion. And it's mixed. I think pakora is going to be something like a popdom. Well, it isn't. Next in is chilli powder, ground coriander and salt. Now I'm putting in Andy's homemade garam masala. You can't get that in the shops, can you? Obviously not. It smells like somewhere between Australia and India. That's the sea, isn't it? Oh, oh, 
Lemon is squeezed into the veg mix, along with gram flour and his aromatic paste. This coriander and chilli mixture that I'm putting in is pretty spicy, but that's why you have the shop-bought mango chutney with it, cos it's sweet. It's all given a good mix. Logic control, everything's looking good. We are ready for the refrigerator. Copy that, refrigerator ready to receive. The pakoras will be deep fried this evening, and it's on to the main. Chana masala and creamy paneer masala with spiced rice. Oh, so very similar to mine. So, yeah, we've got a curry off. Shika and Andy. To get his spiced rice done in a trice, into coconut oil go onions, chilli, the homemade garam masala and rice, of course. Every grain has to be coated in this spicy mix to make my rice better than everyone else's this week. That's fighting talk. Andy adds vegetable stock and puts a side to simmer. Onto the curries, starting with the chana masala. I would like at least one of the curries to be a little bit on the, the warmer side rather than really mild. I think doing two curries gives me two horses in the race. I'm trying to make everyone happy. The people that like it pretty spicy, the people that are less confident with the spice, and you have the choice on your plate. Clever! Having chopped coriander, garlic, ginger and chilli, the mix is blitzed. Sheikah's curries were slightly on the mild side. This one will have a bit more of a kick. Next to coconut oil, he adds cumin seeds, onion and curry paste. In go green beans, along with a selection of spices and a tin of toms. Control, this is chickpeas, request entry. Chickpeas, you are cleared for entry. And they're into land. If this curry was an aircraft, it would be a jet engine with the turbo boosters on. I think he means it's hot. Hold on to your hats, ladies. I'm a bit worried about turbulence. I was not expecting Indian food again. I'm actually not really sure what chana masala or creamy paneer masala is. It's a chickpea and a cheese curry, to be precise. Can you smell that? That is the smell of winning. Andy quickly knocks up another base for the creamy paneer masala. Creamy paneer, so I wonder if he's going to make his paneer from scratch. Um, I did. Doesn't look like it. She can made her paneer. Quite honestly, that really impressed me. But I reckon my supermarket paneer is going to be just as good. We'll see. He chops, fries, and then adds to his curry base, along with yoghurt. This curry looks creamy. Ooh, creamy dreamy. Main's done, it's on to dessert. Australian mess. Ooh, I wonder what an Australian mess is compared to, like, an Eton mess. What's an Australian mess? It's a mess with mango and passion fruit. Thanks for clarifying. I think this is amazing. I love tropical fruit, I love mango, I love passion fruit. Andy blitzes his mango and scoops out his passion fruit, setting aside for later. I'm expecting Andy to have made his own meringues tonight. He would definitely have made his meringues, cos he hasn't put shot ball. <laughs> You're right. He starts by separating eggs. OK, let's see if I can do this without getting the yolk in. Nope, oh, there it goes. Oh, which I've just done. Just get that out with a spoon. Egg whites are whisked. They're looking all right. In goes caster sugar to form stiff peaks. What I want is for the whole thing to be crispy for this dessert, so I'm going to paint it on reasonably thin. I've never done it this way before, but I reckon it's a good idea. Fingers crossed, then. It's in to bake. Come on, little babies. Don't let me down. I'm presuming that this is going to be with some meringue, a bit of cream, and, to be honest, that's probably going to be quite delicious. Here's hoping. To cream, Andy adds vanilla seeds. OK, vanilla's loaded and dispatched. Next is sugar. Chocks away. And it's whipped. Just like a really good landing, I've creamed it. Well done, you. He'll combine the components before serving. Right, that's all the prep done. I just need to go upstairs and get ready. Ascend to the first floor. It could be a winning menu. Oh, if it's done well, this can be a winning menu. I'm still hoping that mine is better. Time to find out. Here's the first guest, driving instructor Sarah. Oh, hello. Hi, lovely to Good see Good evening. You. How are you? Mwah. What a beautiful garden. Thank you so much. Oh, it's wonderful. Not a weed to be seen. Look at it. It's oh, amazing. there's one or two if you look close enough. Can <laughs> I offer you a drink? Oh, yes, definitely. It would be rude well, worry, not to there's... celebrate my arrival. <laughs> Cheers. Robust. Lovely to see you. Cheers, Ian. Nice to see you. Next up, it's cafe owner Ed. Hello, hello. Hi, oh, guys. Welcome. Andy. How are you? Mate, good, good to see you. Cracking shirt. 
Yeah, well, that's thank what you say. very that's much. Yes. Amazing. I do love a paisley, though. Yeah. Looking good. I actually was going to put my thongs on. Hello. I've been wearing my thongs all day. Tell her. You know thongs, Australian firm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was, I was envisaging a thong. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sarah, <laughs> the night is young. Don't encourage her. <laughs> Here's Sheikah. Hello. Oh, oh hi. 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 How are you? Oh, Welcome to my home, you. beautiful. Mwah. How are you? Well, I'm good. How are you? Fabulous. Were you stressed today? No, I've had a great time. Uh -huh. You guys are so lovely. I didn't ask him that question. I oh. just walked in and said, what a fabulous garden. No, Andy's garden's next on my list, because it is stunning. It's Andy, stunning. you keep your bush very trim. <laughs> <laughs> last but not least, it's last night's host, Kasara. Hello, everybody. Oh, oh hello. Hey. Welcome, hey. Sheen. I'm so looking forward to your night tonight. Thank you. Mwah. Mwah. And thank you so much for your hospitality last yes, night. That was such yes. a treat. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, look at those babies puff up. Coming up, a curry cook-off. I'm feeling the heat. Andy, this is delicious. Thank you so I much, Kasara. I love it so much. Devastated. And here he eats. I ate jellyfish ones. Well, I once ate a witchetty grub. I ate a tarantula. Oh. With the hair on? Yeah. It's night four in and around board. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. And it's the turn of Australian sales manager Andy to try and bag the grand with his Indian menu. While his guests enjoy a sharpener, Andy cracks on with his starter. Whew. I'm, I'm feeling the heat, uh, to be honest. Let's see how we go. He deep fries dollops of the pakora mix. So these may not be as elegant as the pakora that Shaker turned out, but they're going to pack a much bigger punch. On goes a salad garnish. A little bit of colour. And the all-important shop-bought mango chutney. Do you know, I think it could be a winning starter, cos I think the flavours are there. And there it is, vegetable pakoras with shop-bought mango chutney. I hope you enjoy the flavours. Bon appétit. Andy, this is delicious. Thank mm. you so much, Love it. Sarah. Love it so much. I love the variety of the vegetables you've mm -hmm. used. I mm -hmm. love the crispiness on the outside. Mm. I love the chutney. I know it's shop bought, but still, like, it matches the flavour so awesome. well. Looks like the mango chutney might have paid off. But it, this is gorgeous, honestly. So nice. Sheikah, that means a lot coming from you, cos yeah. I so enjoyed yours. I'm a little bit gutted. I actually thought I was going to have the edge with the pakoras, but actually he totally... I think he's a lot more flavour to mine. I'm really loving it. And oh. I wasn't sure what it was. Mm. But it is absolutely delicious. Praise indeed. Really nice. Got a nice bit of heat as well. The mm. after effect. I know you're a bit sensitive. Yeah, I am. But no, this this is lovely. I have to say, the start of this evening was absolutely scrummy. A bit like a bargee, but not a bargee. Well, no, because it's a pakora. So Andy, I have noticed. In fact, I noticed the moment I walked in about the uh, little aeroplane there. Are you a pilot? I am a pilot. Ooh. Yay. Oh. It is a hobby, it's a passion, in fact. Since I was four years old, I walked around looking up at the sky in wonder at these things. How do they stay up there? Like, I know the maths now, but it's still, every time I take off, I sort of glimpse at the wing and I think, how does that really work? It's got to mm. be magic. That novelty has never worn off for me. Wow. That's mm. incredible. I always got the image that Andy was very well travelled. I would not have clocked him as a pilot, though. Would any of you like to come flying? Yeah. Yes. One hundred percent. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. Well, then you're all very welcome. Mm. I can take two of you at a time. Yes. Who wouldn't? Do you want to go on your plane? Yes, please. I'm there. Take me up. Where have you flown from to? This little aeroplane, the maximum range on that is normally about four and a half to five hours. Uh, however, back in 2013, I flew that aircraft from here to my hometown, Sydney, in Australia. What? Oh, Way. my God. Yeah. Impressive. I stopped 26 times. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. It took seven weeks and two days to get there. That's <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah. I don't think I would have the balls to do something like that, but absolutely, yeah, Andy, totally, hats off to him. That was, that's a great thing to do. Oh, who does that? Interesting people, that's who do that. I've had it said to me that it's very brave to fly this single-engine aircraft all the way to Australia over deserts and oceans and so forth. I think the truth is that brave and stupid are basically the same thing. <laughs> Having got to know you all a little bit this week, I think you're all brave and I know you're all stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that was certainly brave. <laughs> and you're so right. Yeah, you are so right. <laughs>
He definitely does have a daredevil side and he's definitely adventurous. And I can imagine being on a plane with him, you'd feel like you're in the Raiders of the Lost Ark or something. So what's the bravest or stupidest thing that any of you have done? Bravest thing I've ever done on that front is in Jersey, we jumped off a rock into the sea. Like a tall a rock? rock? Mm. Well, it wasn't really that tall, but I thought it was really brave of me. No, no, but that takes real guts. Um, What's it called? Yeah, but... Coasting. Uh, co steering. Co steering. I've done co steering. That is actually fabulous, but it really does take some courage. I did co steering in uh, Mexico. And yeah, no, that was. I'm terrified of heights. So that was a big thing for me. Yeah, nutters. Why would you, why would you want to go jumping off rocks? Honestly, do you know, I sat there tonight around that dinner table and just thought, I'm so boring. Everyone's different. <laughs> On to the main, and Andy starts by frying homemade roti. Oh, look at those babies puff up. Ho, ho! He then quickly knocks together a few cooling condiments, including banana and coconut, cucumber and mint raita, and red onion, tomato and mint salad. The purpose of these condiments is so that people can have the curry as they like it to their taste. By adding these condiments, you effectively cool the curry down. Now to plate the rice with his duo of masalas. That's as elegant as you can get with a spoonful of curry. And it's ready. I certainly hope this is a winning main. I'm confident that the flavours are there, if not the presentation. Chana masala, creamy paneer masala, spiced rice and homemade roti. So please enjoy and everyone tuck in. So how do you feel about this meal? Um, does anyone miss the meat, for example? No, 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 not at all. No. And I think you've done so many other little dishes mm. to go with it that mm. really complements and helps that. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you've done a cracking job. Mm, thank you. You could tell that he's really gone through a lot of work. Could have been spicier, but amazing flavours. Really well executed, actually. What did you use to spice the rice with him? I feel like I'm tasting a little bit of coconut. I've used coconut oil, actually, in all of the dishes, but also in the rice. Mm -hmm. What else did you use? There's also um, my own homemade garam masala in there. Really? Mm. Oh, wow. So, in terms of the curry off, I think I might have cracked it. I think he's got the edge, actually. I think his main was better than mine. Gutting. I know. Devastated. So, Sheikah, I saw an eyebrow go up, despite the Botox. <laughs> oh, what are your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. No offence, man. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I truly didn't mean any of that. No, 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 not at all. You don't even look like you've had it, and your eyebrows do move. Don't <laughs> worry. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you said that to Sheikha. I can't believe you said that thing about Botox to Sheikha. Oh, it was definitely one of those comments, and it was just comedy gold. That was meant in fun, and I'm sure that Sheikha took it that way. No, I'm not offended at all. I didn't know. I thought it was really, really funny. I loved it. Phew! So, I, I like old Valve radio technology. Uh, in fact, I like radio technology so much that I have an uh, amateur radio licence, which means that I can... Wow! Yeah, I can, I can broadcast, uh, communicate with people. And you're not just talking the spiritual world here. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're communi we, there's thousands of people that engage in this technical hobby. We can communicate with people all over the world. Mm. People in the Caribbean, uh -huh. uh, people in Japan. Oh, my gosh, that's so cool! I think he's one of those people that... He's so passionate about what he does. He gets you into it. Like, he could be really into roads, and the next thing you know, I could be sitting there having a conversation about the M23 and having a great time. In fact, have you heard of Morse code? I was about to yeah. say Morse code, yeah. I really enjoy using Morse code to communicate with people. Bit niche. There's an 83-year-old friend of mine down in Poole called Dave. Every Saturday morning, 7 a.m., we're out there, we have about an hour's long chat. Oh it's gosh. just like text messaging. He has all this different knowledge of all these different areas, and I just think that's so cool. When you sit down with someone and you're like, you're captivated by what they're telling you, I think that's, um, yeah, that's a sign of a good host. With the main out of the way, one last chance for Andy to impress with his dessert. It's got a little bit of bite and a little bit of softness just to give us the texture in the cream. Having crumbled his meringue, he adds to whipped cream and gets messy with the mango, passion fruit and some more mango. Well, I think it's looking pretty good. I tell you what, on top of those curries I've just done, I reckon this will get me the thousand pounds. With Andy aiming to clean up, here's his Australian mess. So, Andy, what makes this Australian? I think the mango and passion fruit, all through my home state of New South Wales, when it's mango season, they pile up by the side of the road in boxes you can buy so cheap. And passion fruit, I used to have growing outside my window at home in Australia, and the passion fruit flowers in the spring. You, it, it's so evocative of home for me, and I really hope you enjoy it. Ooh, thank you. Thank you.
So, guys, how are you enjoying it? I love it. Did he grow your own mangoes, Andy? <laughs> no, Ed, I did not grow my own mangoes. But if I could have, I would have done it for you. Oh, thanks, Aww. mate. Creep. Did you make the meringue? Of course, yes, I made the meringue, yes. Mm. Um, it's the third time in my life I have made a meringue. Oh, congrats. So I'm, I'm pleased. <laughs> it's a really good job. Yeah, thank really you. good. Well, thank you. Well, I thought it was delicious. Mm. Oh, thank you. Mm. Yeah, really nice. I'm not the biggest fan of passion fruit. However, because you've got the sweetness and the cream and the meringue, it's actually really quite nice. It works really well. It was tasty and it was... Yeah, it was just nice. Just, yeah, it was just good. The flavours were wonderful and um, I really, really enjoyed it. it. It was just a nice, refreshing dessert. I don't know if anyone else has eaten any um, odd things, um, but I once ate a witchetty grub. Oh, What's no. Um, what is that, by the way? Because uh, a witchetty grub is the pupating stage of a certain uh, moth, I think, that we have mm. in Australia. You're not selling it. Well, it was when we were... Um, uh, on exercise in the military, and it was part of survival training. And um, before I was vegetarian, I hasten to add. And um, the reality is, if you break the heads off and you fry them in a little butter, they don't taste too bad. I ate jellyfish once. Ooh. What did that taste like? It was really not that... It was, like, kind of rubbery. I ate a tarantula. Oh, oh no. no. With the hair on? Yeah. And you ate that? Yeah, I just had to try stuff. Is it too late for me to change my menu for tomorrow night? <laughs> <laughs> Starter, I think I killed it. Main, I think, was really good. Dessert, I think I might have done enough to win. Let's find out. So tonight I've had a fun evening. Um, it was lovely food. Um, Andy was a fantastic host, and for that reason, I'm going to give him a seven. Tonight, I'm going to give Andy an eight. I can't believe he beat me in cooking Indian food, but he did a great job. So for that, I'm going to score Andy a nine. Andy, thanks for your time. I'm giving you a nine. So, Andy soars to the top of the leaderboard, scoring 33. Next time... Oh a blushing bride. Good evening, everybody. I'll tell you what, mate, the best thing about that dress is your hairy chest. Oh, thank you, mate. <laughs> and accidental accusations. You all do it, bar Kassara. Showering. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it just came into my head and I just couldn't stop it. Yeah, I can I can broadcast, uh, communicate with people. And you're not just talking the spiritual world here. Oh no no, <laughs> um, we're communi we, There's thousands of people that engage in this technical hobby. We can communicate with people. Pretty good. I tell you what, on top of those curries I've just done, I reckon this will get me the thousand pounds. With Andy aiming to clean up, here's his Australian mess. So, Andy, what makes this Australian? I think the mango and passion fruit, all through my home state of New South Wales, when it's mango season, they pile up by the side of the road in boxes you can buy so cheap. And passion fruit, I used to have growing outside my window at home in Australia, and the passion fruit flowers in the spring. You, it, it's so evocative of home for me, and I really hope you enjoy it. Ooh, thank you. So, guys, how are you enjoying it? I love it. Did he grow your own mangoes, Andy? <laughs> no, Ed, I did not grow my own mangoes. But if I could have, I would have done it for you. Oh, thanks, Aww. mate. Creep. Did you make the meringue? Of course, yes, I made the meringue, yes. Mm. Um, it's the third time in my life I have made a meringue. Oh, congrats. So I'm, I'm pleased. <laughs> it was a really good job. Yeah, thank really you. good. Well, thank you. Well, I thought it was delicious. Mm. Oh, thank you. Mm. Yeah, really nice. I'm not the biggest fan of passion fruit. However, because you've got the sweetness and the cream and the meringue, it's actually really quite nice. It works really well. It was tasty and it was... 
Yeah, it was just not. I'm just yeah, it was just good. The flavours were wonderful, and um, I really, really enjoyed it. it. It was just a nice, refreshing dessert. I don't know if anyone else has eaten any um, odd things, um, but I once ate a witchetty grub. Oh What's no! That? Um, what is that, by the way? Because uh, a witchetty grub is the pupating stage of a certain uh, moth, I think that we have mm. in Australia. You're not selling it. Well, it was when we were. Um, uh, on exercise in the military, and it was part of survival training. And um, before I was vegetarian, I hasten to add. And um, the reality is, if you break the heads off and you fry them in a little butter, they don't taste too bad. I ate jellyfish once. Ooh. What did that taste like? It was really not that... It was, like, kind of rubbery. I ate a tarantula. Oh, oh no. no. With the hair on? Yeah. And you ate that? Yeah, I just had to try stuff. Is it too late for me to change my menu for tomorrow night? <laughs> <laughs> Starter, I think I killed it. Main, I think, was really good. Dessert, I think I might have done enough to win. Let's find out. So tonight I've had a fun evening. Um, it was lovely food. Um, Andy was a fantastic host, and for that reason, I'm going to give him a seven. Tonight, I'm going to give Andy an eight. I can't believe he beat me in cooking Indian food, but he did a great job. So for that, I'm going to score Andy a nine. Andy, thanks for your time. I'm giving you a nine. So, Andy soars to the top of the leaderboard, scoring 33. Next time... Oh, my God! ..a blushing bride. Good evening, everybody. Oh, I'll tell you what, mate, the best thing about that dress is your hairy chest. Oh, thank you, mate. <laughs> and accidental accusations... You all do it, bar Kassara. Showering? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just came into my head and I just couldn't stop it. <laughs> <laughs>